In the last couple of videos, we've been studying consonants and how we can describe consonants, mainly using place of articulation and the manner of articulation of a consonant. What your tongue and your mouth are doing and what and how you, the air is exiting from your mouth. Here we're going to study a third way in which we can describe consonants by their voicing or what your vocal cords are doing as you produce the consonant. We're going to study that. We're going to study some extensions to the basic IPA letters that we're going to need to describe English. Those are called diacritics. And we're going to study a uh, series of consonants where the air doesn't go out. It actually rushes in. They are called ingressives. Let's do this. So voicing is the description of what your vocal cords are doing when you produce a sound. This is what, vocal, what human vocal cords look like when they are vibrating. Yep, it looks slow, but the, those vocal cords were actually vibrating around at around 200 times per second. So vocal cords are flaps of flesh inside of your throat, and as the air rushes through, it sets them in motion. And there are many sounds that where the vocal cords are vibrating. For example, all vowels in English have the vocal cords vibrating. Please put your hand on your throat and say something like, ah, ah. You're going to feel some vibration on your throat. Those are your vocal cords. When a sound has the vocal cords on, we say that it's a voiced sound. And as you can see on the IPA table, it helpfully says that all of the voiced sounds are on the right of each cell. So for example, something like this one, like the English Z, you can feel the vibration on your throat. The voiceless ones are on the left, like the English S, no vibration. So voiced, voiceless, voiced, Z, voiceless s. Uh, this is true for all of the other cells. For example, voiced v, v and voiceless f, f, and so forth. So there are voiced sounds where the vocal cords are engaged and vibrating, and voiceless sounds where the vocal cords are not vibrating. Mm -hmm. This is the last piece of the puzzle that we needed. We now have three ways in which we can describe consonants by the state of the vocal cords, by their place of articulation, and by their manner of articulation. So I want you to go ahead and give this a try. These are some sounds that we use in English. Please try to describe them using the state of voicing, whether they're voiced or voiceless, and then the place of articulation, and then the manner of articulation. Please pause the video. All right, an M is voiced, mm, bilabial, mm, two lips, and nasal because some of the air is coming out of your nose. Mm. Voiced, bilabial, nasal. A V is a voiced labial dental, teeth and lips, fricative because the air is coming out in a turbulent rush. V. A K is a voiceless velar stop. In engma, this is what this is called. This is the final sound of, of the word sing. This is voiced, velar, nasal. Sing. It is vibrating. This one is called an esh. This is the voiceless, postal velar, fricative. Shh. No vibration. By the way, the names are not really that important. What matters is that you learn these three ways in which we can describe them. The, this is the R in English. It's a voiced alveolar approximant. Er, er, red, for example. So that is how we describe consonants. There are more consonants that what we just see on the table, and sometimes we need to modify those basic characters to describe some language. For example, English. In English, we have a few phenomena that need these additional diacritics. For example, 
aspiration. I'm going to use my very sciencey piece of paper here to demonstrate. So the letter P in English has two personalities. In the word spam, it is not going to produce an explosion of air. Spam, spam, this thing is not moving. However, look at what happens when you say Pam, Pam. I urge you to go look, uh, uh, get a piece of paper and try it yourselves. Pam versus Spam. Two piece, very different effects. The first one is called an aspirated P. It has an extra, very strong puff of air that comes out. And this happens when it is the first sound of a word in English. However, in some uh, circumstances, for example, when there's an S before the P, you don't get an aspiration. Pam, spam. Uh, it also happens with the T's, for example. Top, stop. Top, stop. Very strong puff, no puff. There we go. Um, another English consonant that needs a modification is the velarized or dark L. There's actually two L's in English. There's the one in leaf, where your tongue is towards the front, and there's the one in pool. Pool. Try to do it yourself. Pool, where the tongue goes towards the back, towards the velar region. So say them quickly so you can notice your tongue going back and forth. Leaf, pool. Leaf, pool. The first L, the one with the, your teeth touching uh, your alveolar uh, ridge, is just the regular L. The one with, where the tongue is receded towards the back, pool, is this dark L. And as a matter of fact, if you pronounce it yourself, you'll feel that the tip of your tongue is not touching your alveolar ridge, pool. We call this a dark L, or a velarized L, and it has like this little curl in the middle. So with this new information, I want you to give this a try. I put in the vowels, but please try to transcribe these words in English. So there can be more than one consonant in each of these lines. With the consonants that you know and the modifiers that you know, try to transcribe these words. Pause the video. All right. So we already tried with a piece of paper. The first one is top with an aspirated T and then a P. The second one is stop with just a regular T and no aspiration. In the word cold, cold, you get first an aspirated K and then a dark L, cold. If you pronounce it very slowly, you'll see that the tip of your tongue is not moving towards your alveolar ridge, cold. Same as in Feel, feel, the tip of your tongue is not touching the alveolar ridge. All right, final thing I want to show you. This uh, is a series of consonants where the air goes in. And the first one of these is called clicks. And I'll let uh, Pumza Filani from the BBC explain to you what a click is. Or actually show you an example of a language where clicks are used. That's more accurate. Show me my respect and bow down. I may not be from Wakanda, but I do speak the language. Yes, sir. Hi. Hi. What you hear in the film is a Zitlosa, my language. It's a language spoken by just over 8 million people in South Africa and was Nelson Mandela's home language. So let's take it up a notch. Remember, you're driving Black Panther around town and maybe you want to know which side of the road to drive on. So you would say, Let's try that again. So you would say, hmm? So the name of the language is, um, with the lateral, Osa. So it's a, the name of a language from South Africa, and you use your teeth, your tongue, to sort of suck air in, Osa. Osa. The uh, two words that she used were itnala, itnala, side, and nikmuba, uh, nikmuba, uh, you drive. So, for example, the bilabial is mwah, mwah. There's, this, there's a little amount of air coming in. 
These are the clicks. There's other uh, ingressives such as the implosives. For example, Vietnamese and Maya have these. This word is bun mi, bun mi, sandwich. In Yucatec Maya, this one is bil, bil. It's the same position of your lips for a B, but the air rushes in. Third, we have the ejectives, where there's like an additional, uh, you create pressure to rush the air in as you are ejecting it, as you are uh, setting up your articulators. For example, in kol, kol. Uh, sorry, kol, kol, musician, that's more like it. In summary, um, we use three dimensions to describe consonants, place of articulation, manner of articulation, and voicing, whether your vocal cords are vibrating or not. And all of the consonants that we had looked at before have air coming out of your mouth. There are some consonants, like the ingressives, where air goes into your mouth.